Next, we have the use context hook. So inside our hooks folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it context.js. Now, I do want to mention this. The use context hook is a bit different in convention in that if you want to create context for your application, inside the source folder, you create a new folder called context. And then inside the context folder, then you can create whatever context that you want. So for example, if you want to create context that holds some kind of state, then you can call it state.js inside the context. Just make sure that if you have a similar file named, like in this case, then you don't conflict with the names. So let me re rename this to context.js. And then inside here, let me say RFC like so. Now, let me show you the problem that context aims to solve. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and inside my source folder, I'm going to create a new folder called components, components. And then inside components, I'm just going to say something like, let me say, it doesn't really matter, but let me just say home.js. Let me say RFC inside here and then save that. And then inside my app.js, let me just go ahead and render the home, which is coming from dot slash components for slash home. And then of course, disable the ref so that now on the home screen, we only have home showing. Now, if we go into this file and what I've done, there's just control click. So control so that it highlights it and then click it to open up the file. So inside this component, I want to go ahead and import the use state hook. So import the use state hook. And then let me go ahead and declare a variable here called name and set name. And then by default, it's going to just pass in my name. And then this, I'm going to go ahead and render out another component inside here that is called home one. Let me just call it home one. And then let's create that component. Now, because we're in the same file, we don't export default because you can only have one default export per file. So I'm just going to say function home one. And then inside here, I'm going to return a div that says home one. Let me just say one like so. Now, when I save that, then we should see home one, right? Now, I want to do this something similar. I want to create a home two inside here. I want to create home two and home two. Now, what I want to do is home one is going to be rendering home two, okay? Also, home, home one component is rendering the home two component and the home component is rendering the home one component. <laughs> a bit convoluted, but I hope you get how the, the it's working. So if I save that, then we have home two on the screen because home two is what is being rendered by home one and home one is what is being rendered by the home component. Now, in this case, what if I wanted to render this name inside my home two component? Now you would think that, you know, if this is, it's in the same file, so I can just go ahead and render out the name, but we're going to get an error because it says unexpected use of name, right? And it says no restrict, restricted globals. So what is happening is, even though it is in the same file, this component is still separated from this one because a React is treating it as one component, a second component and a third component. It is equivalent to creating separate components for the home one and the home two. It is basically equivalent to that. So therefore what happens is if I want to have access to this name component inside my home two, what I need to do is what is unofficially called prop drilling. So I need to go ahead and pass in the name prop inside my home, co home one component. So name is equal to name. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a component here called, sorry, a prop called name. And this is the name here is going to be dependent on you. So you can call it milk. Just make sure that whatever is being referenced is the actual state value that you want to, to be accessed, right? And then if I do something like this, then I can go inside my home one component, destructure the prop that I gave it, and then go ahead once again, because I still need access to this, inside my home to component. So I need, I still need to pass it in as a prop here. So milk is equal to milk. And then once again, if you want to call it something different, you can call it something different, but you can see that the naming might confuse you, right? And then finally inside here, go ahead and destructure the milk and then render out the milk. Now what will happen is that it's going to show my name. Finally, right? Now, let me do not name this milk. Let me just change it to name because it's going to be easier. And what I've done there is control D. So just highlight the text here and then control D a bunch of times and then simply change it up. Now, 
see how this i mean it's 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 going to work if it is a small component but can you imagine if you had a component or rather a website like like what facebook or tiktok and then you had to do this for every single component it becomes extremely cumbersome now the way we solve this is using the context api so let's go ahead and jump inside our context now the way this is structured is we need to go ahead and import create context and we need to import the use state hook because we want to go ahead and pass in a, a bunch of state values right and then once we import those two then we need to go ahead and create our context and this is the one that we're going to be exporting so we need to say export const let me call this state context is equal to create context and then just call the function and then now we can go ahead and create our state values so we had a state value called name and set name and then this is equal to by by default it's going to be equal to my name i can't speak <laughs> let me take some water so once we do that once we create our context right on top then we get access to what is called a provider so instead of rendering out a div here we need to go ahead and render out the provider so state context state context dot provider provider and this is going to help us to access the state from every single part of the application so basically where you want your state to be able to be accessed from you can go ahead and just render out the the context right now inside here we don't want to render any text we want to render what is called children now why is it called children and we need to destruct it inside here as a prop we call it children because this is going to be the parent of every other component which is going to be placed inside it so for example if i wanted to go ahead and render this context only to be inside something like the home component here then the home component is going to be the child of the state context provider so that's why the prop is called children now the provider here takes in a prop that is called value now this value has to be initialized to something singular it can't be it can't be plural and so you would think that you'll have to do something like name and then set name inside here but then look we get an error so this is not permitted however if you were to change this into an object by having double curly brackets then it is permitted okay take note of that however i don't like doing this because i mean for a small component such as this like it's okay but i don't usually use context when my application is small i use context when i have a huge application meaning we're going to have multiple state values multiple functions all running somewhere doing something you know so what i like to do is the following i like to go ahead and create an object here so i like to call it context so this name is optional it's up to you so context is equal to and then pass in every other function or variable or state value that i want to have inside my context and then inside my value prop inside here i just simply go ahead and pass in the context this is a much simpler syntax to me and i prefer to do it that way now once we have that what we need to do is we need to go ahead inside our application and then we need to figure out where our context is going to be accessible from now usually you want it to be accessible from every part of your component so you can go into the index.js and then render out your state context inside here so just make sure that you wrap it inside the app so you can say state and you know what what's it called it's called context i want this one so it should be context and then wrap it inside here because we want the app to be the child of this so context so it is imported there we go and then now if you go back into our home and let me remove this prop and then remove this prop as well and then we, we no longer need this and we no longer need this and we no longer need this because we have declared it in our in our context what you can do now is we can go ahead and destructure the name and set name even though we're not using the set name so let's just remove it and this is now coming from use context and then we need to pass in our state context see that so use context and then we're passing in the state context that we created and then now look at this 
and you know what? this is even in the wrong component <laughs> it needs to be inside this component there we go so that now when i save that then the name is still displayed on the screen okay now look at this if i go back into my context and change this into another name then that name is updated because context now has access to our entire application so that is a very nice way and look at this we have already removed all of that bloat that we had before we are no longer using props we are no longer using props here all we need to do is just destructure the the name from the use context and then pass in the state context i mean it's much much simpler right however i do want to say this it is not recommended to use use context or to use the context api for every single application and what they do recommend is this if your application is small such as in this case then you can simply use prop drilling without getting confused anyway however when your application begins to have multiple functionalities and what you know saving to local storage having a delete function and edit function a function that goes to the database when you begin to have all that then you can destructure them into the context api or the refactor them sorry not destructure you can refactor them into the context api so that all that data and all that functionality is easier to manage so for example if I wanted to go ahead and add in let me say something like a delete function so let me say async function delete items what am i typing delete items I can go ahead and say this so delete item by the id so simply just like the the function that we created in our to-do list so i can say set items into items.filter and then i can say that for every item then return the item.id which is not equal to the id which is our parameter and then all i need to do is just say delete items here so when i just do that then it is automatically added inside the context which is now accessible inside every part of my component we just need to create this state value so i can say const const items and set items is equal to use state and by default i can do something like what let me create an array of objects and then let me say this the id is going to be one the title is going to be my first name and then the description is going to say front end web dev and then not let me just copy it because it's going to be simpler so copy that paste it here as an object has to be an object change this to two change this to my second name change this to back end developer just like that now if i go ahead and save that then look at this i also want to pass in the items right so let me pass in the items here the items we need the items and set items is already being used here so we don't need it here so save that now look at this if i go into my home i can go ahead and say this const items is equal to use context and then pass in my state con sorry state context that's the wrong one not this one so state context and then instead of rendering this i can go ahead and render out items.map and then for every item then i can go ahead and return something like let me say a div and then inside this div close it out inside this div i can give it a key of item.id and then i'm going to have an h3 it says the item dot name what did i do title not name item dot title and then below this h3 i can have a paragraph that says item dot description now if i go ahead and you know what we no longer this need this so let me just comment it out so i can save that and look at this we now have our items which is coming from our context isn't that very nice now let's add the delete functionality so that i can show you that it's working so let's have a button here that says delete and then we're going to say on click then we want to call the delete function so we need the delete items so delete items so just make sure that you get it from use context what they call it delete items okay and then we're going to say delete items by the item id so that when i save that i can delete this first one and it deletes it so basically the same functionality that we had in our to-do list we have refactored that to use context isn't that quite interesting it very much is so let me see what we're going to work on in the next video 
we are going to do we have done news ref and use context so and we've done custom hooks and the rules of hooks and let's see so i guess we're only left with the use memo and the use callback hook yeah so let's start on the use memo hook in the next one